you got 30,200 watts or volt amps, same difference, interchangeable on the top. Now the combination of the two on the bottom should equal the one on the top, and in this case we're really looking at several of the point calculations together. So if I multiply the two against the bottom, divide them into the top, it's going to tell me how many minimum number of those I have to have, right? Is that 30? Uh, 30200? 13 point. Uh -huh. Can we, uh, can we round up or? Well, you'd always have to round up. It's a minimum, so you're looking at, at, at no matter what that decimal is, it's always going to be the next larger number. Okay. So, for example, when I do this, 20 times 120 is 2400 VA, right? Mm -hmm. One breaker holds exactly 2400 volt amps worth of water or volts or whatever you want to look at it. And so, if I divide that into the same volt amp a unit of measurement up here, what do you get on your calculator? 12.5. 12.5? 12.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, 5.8. Okay. Y'all would round that up uh, on your own just, just by accident anyway. But but in any case, a question like this would always be rounded up because there's a minimum number of rent circuits. Even if your answer had been 0 0.01, that 0 0.01 wouldn't fit in that last breaker. I'd have it spill out on the floor if it was water. So I'd have to have another one even for that 0.01. So that's always round those up. That's right. Minimums round up, maximums round down. Now, Let's say that, just so that I can clear up this uh, continuous duty one more time, how many of you guys put a maximum of 8% on a breaker all the time as kind of general rule? You ever heard that before? Like my 20 amp breaker, the most yeah. you put on 16 amps. 16 amps. Is that all the time, every case? Well, that's, no. that's a common practice. No. Well, in this case right here, would I have to take 80% of that 2400 and divide it into the 30,200? Or could I do what I just did with 2400? That's only a D-ray on calculation. <laughs> I mean, what, what would y'all do? If you had that lighting like that and you took that, that breaker number, would you take 2400 or you take 80% of that number? On the, on the test, I'll probably do with the print, sir. Do with the Well, that, that's no, true, I guess. All right, my, my point is is that with that 80% rule or that you're talking about, it, it, it's, it's the backwards part or it's the connected part or the reverse part of continuous duty. Breakers, especially your smaller frame ones, aren't rated for continuous duty. So if you if you look at it from the standpoint of that 2400 VA, if that's not a continuous duty rating, which means that, that I can't I can't put 2400 VA worth of continuous duty load on there because if I did, I had 2400 VA and it was a motor load, for example, I'd have to multiply that times 1.25, wouldn't I? So 24 times 1.25 is a number bigger than my breaker value would be because it's not rated for that. So then I have to adjust either. This number, like I did that to compensate for the continuous duty, or I come up here to the breaker side and say, all right, well, if my breaker's 2400 VA as well, if I take 80% of this number, right, I'm doing the same exact compensation, I'm just doing it in the opposite direction. In other words, if I have a 20 amp breaker, right, and I know that I want to put 80% of that on as a maximum load, on the calculator, 20 times 0 0.80 gives you 16 amps, right? Yes. I had a motor that I knew was 16 amps, and I wanted to compensate because I know that's a continuous duty load. I multiply that times 1.25 for continuous duty, remember? Right. And that gives you what on your calculator? 20. Exactly 20. So it's the reciprocal. It doesn't look like a reciprocal because it, it looks like it should be 1.2, right? It, it, so it, that's it, not the way that's supposed So you said up. if you multiply, if you're going up, you divide the, the opposite. So well, you're, you're stealing so the thunder. Stop. Um, so basically, you see what I'm talking about. So what you're talking about with loading those breakers on the field at 80 percent, except for passive place equipment and stuff like that. That's because the breakers are for continuous duty. So in this case, had this question told you that that was continuous duty lighting, or told you that, that or didn't say anything about the considerations already been made, you're going to have to compensate for that one way or the other. So let's go back and look at this. As if I had. 30,200 that they didn't say a word about the continuous duty considerations, right? Yes. So if I just had 32,000 VA load of my intensity discharge lighting, which is telling me it's commercial, it's going to be continuous duty type uh, lighting. 30,200 VA, if that's continuous duty, my breaker size is at 2,400. I'm either going to take that consideration or that compensation down here, which means I'm going to take 80% of this number, right? Because what I'm saying is that if that's not ready for continuous duty and I multiply it times 80%, then I'm lowering the amount that I can put on one breaker to 1600, is it? No, it's not 1600. It's 1200 times up today. 
1920? Yeah. So in other words, it's still using 2400 yes. down here. I use 1920 because that's what a single circuit derated for the continuous duty would, would give me. And then when I divide it into that top, I'm going to get a bigger number than we did before. But if you don't want to do it that way, most of the time, if you know what the load is, you, and you know it's continuous duty, we're going to multiply it up here times 125. That's going to give me a bigger number up here, which will compensate the same way we did on the other side. One way we made that smaller, this way we made it bigger. But I just do one or the other. I don't do it both. Okay? So if I had a continuous duty motor, and I compensated that load at 125%, and then turned around and took 8% off of my breaker, I'm, I'm double penalizing myself. I just do it one way or the other. I do it from the load side or from the... Now, Reciprocal math is, is helpful if you understand it. If you don't understand it, it'll confuse the hell out of you and it'll make you feel bad. So, and I'm not saying that to be smart, uh, smart ass, because it, it did the same thing to me until I really kind of grasped what we're talking about. A lot of this stuff didn't make sense, but if you can, if you can wrap your mind around it, it'll help explain why the math in this code book doesn't sometimes make sense. Because the way they phrase things is almost always backwards from the way we, you know, find them in the field. That stuff yesterday with the, with the wire and passkey, right? Every one of those was a factor, less than 100% in most cases, that we would take a wire size and derate by multiplying that percentage that's less than 100 and it made this number smaller, right? How many times have you been sitting around the shop and you had wire on the shelf and you the G-Ball? I wonder where we could go install that 250 on today. Do you do it that way? No. No, you know what the load is. Do all those calculations before we're doing right now, those feeder calculations. You come up with a number and say, okay, I've got this value that I've got to find a wire size to fit. And then you go to this table that you turn around and have to take a wire size at a random guess because you know you've got some compensations to make. You just don't really know how they fit. So you've got to go just pick a wire called a random uh, pick, and, pick and pray method. You pick one you think is bigger than the one you need. You do all that math working back down and see if that number is bigger than the load value. And if it is, you do the next smaller one to make sure you're not overcompensating. If it's not, then you kind of do the one on the bottom. I mean, it's really, you can do three or four wire calculations before you finally zero into the right one. Reciprocal mass sucks, but if you can remember one thing, that 80% is a multiplier. I multiply that, that against a, a, you know, a breaker or a switch, and the code's going to give me this number more often than not. It's the same thing I'm talking about with the wire mass. So, for example, motor switches. They allow me to use a general use snap switch, as long as the load it serves does not uh, increase more than 80% of the rating of the switch. Well, I don't pick the switch first and then pick the motor to go with the switch. I, I know what the motor is, I pick the switch. So this 80% in the code book is not as helpful as knowing that the reciprocal of that number there, I'm using multiplication again against the load, is 125%. Make sense? So, but in both cases I'm using multipliers, but I have to know what that reciprocal number is. And unless you want to learn some, some other algebra, it's really not a good idea to try to figure that out. Plus, that wire opacity stuff is all given to you as multipliers, right? All you have to remember, though, in reciprocal world, if you're multiplying an 80% value against one number to get a smaller number, to, you know, to derate that the value, if you use the opposite operation with the same number mathematically, you get the same movement as you would do if you knew what the reciprocal number was. So in other words, instead of using 125% for my continuous duty number, if I knew that I had a 16 amp motor, and I know that I've got to compensate because that switch is only rateable to 80%, if I simply divide by 0.80 instead of multiply, you're going to get the exact same answer that you would if you knew what the 125 was when we used it as a multiplier. And I, trust me, if you're, not, if you're not tracking with it, don't worry about it. It's just additional stuff that will help you. If not, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. But you get 20 amps, right? So I need a 20 amp rated switch minimum for that 16 amp motor load. Same thing applies with the wire and the conductors. If I have a 99 degree Fahrenheit uh, ambient temperature out there, and I know that the, the D rate at uh, 99 degrees for 75 degree line, what, what number would that be? How quickly can you find the D-rate for a uh, 99 degrees Fahrenheit in a 75 degree column uh, for wire and pass D-rates? Two degrees. Besides wire theory. All right, we have an answer of 99 degrees Fahrenheit at uh, 75 degree column, which would be the middle column. What's up? Besides? 
Well, the size doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're on the wire, but I'm asking you what's the derating that I would use to apply to that value on that table. What, what, what do I apply against that 4 and 9, 9 degrees Fahrenheit? What's it Fahrenheit? 9 degrees. 88 percent. 0.88. So, every, all, every day, all day long, if I'm putting wire outside into Houston, Texas, I'm looking at an 88 percent of the wire value being brought down to compensate for it. Well, is that very helpful to you if you're doing the one out there doing the service and you're trying to figure out what wire size it is? If you just all you got to remember, if I've got a 40,280, 41,280 VA load for residential building calculation, and I have, or any calculation for that matter, and I've got a 240 volt service, I convert that to amps, which would be what? 172. Uh, 172? 172.0. Uh, what? 132. Even? You mean I nailed that just Wow. <laughs> man, I need to buy a lottery card. 100, man, that's a nice clean number, isn't it? All right, 172 uh, amps. I can't just turn around in, in a 993 Fahrenheit if, if deal and just go randomly, uh, just put a, a, a wire size based on 175 amps, right? Let's, let me say that's a commercial. I don't want to get into residential stuff. They bring up all the whole stuff as well. But, so my derating, though, I know I'm going to have to take against the wire is 88%. So I just go randomly pick a wire that's bigger than 172 amps, which on your table on 161 would be a 200 amp um, rating for a 3-odd? 3-odd 172. Right? 3-odd? Yeah. So I'd take that 200 amp rating and I'd multiply it times 0.88 to see if, see if I'm, I'm uh, above 172 amps. 2-odd. Try, try and see if, if you get a... Uh, what? Take the value of the 3-odd the on page 161. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. It's 200 amps, right? Yeah. Take 200 multiply times 0.88, but that's the compensation for 99 degrees Fahrenheit. What do you got? 170. 170? So it's not quite good enough yet for 172 amp loads. So now i got to go back to the table and do a 4 off at 225. 230. 230. 88? 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. 88. What? The other one worked. 0.88 is 176. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, well. Times 276. So, times so that worked. 3R. 3R. 176. That would be good enough. 3R. <laughs> Dang it. I like the 170 better. <laughs> My point is, is that if you just turn around and take that, that 172 and divide it by 0.88 instead of multiplying against the wire, if I use division here as an op op the opposite operation, I get to use the same number, so these tables are actually useful now. I don't have to worry about figuring out what the reciprocal of those multipliers are. I just know that I just divide my load by the values on the table instead of multiplying them against the wire size, like I did yesterday. So in other words, the code tells you how to do it backwards. I'm telling you, just divide it and you know how to do it. And, and it, now it's a useful uh, purpose and tool. Okay? Now, in the code book, when we get into motors here in a minute, the tap rule is the same way. They give you this backwards way of explaining how to do a 10-foot tap rule, which has got to be the feeder has to be at least a thousand percent bigger than the tap conductor. Well, I know I don't know what the feeder I know what the feeder size is. I need to know what my tap size is. Why couldn't they just say the reciprocal of that would be ten percent? Actually, I think it's, I'm sorry, not the feeder, the breaker size. So I'm sure. Excuse me. It's 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 one. The breaker has to be at least one one thousandth. No, it's a thousand percent bigger. Yes. Then. Four taps. Yeah, in the motor. 430.28. Uh, for a 10 foot tap, 430.28 on page uh, uh, 331. It, it can't exceed 1,000%, that's the way it's written. I'm just thinking it's 1 1,000th, which the reverse that would, would be 1 1,000th of a 1,000%. So, in other words, the, the, a 10 foot tap, which is under 430.28.1, has to be closed to the controller, race, etc. Be not more than 10 feet in length, and for devices on the line side of the tap conductor, the rating or setting has to not exceed a thousand percent of the tap conductor capacity. Well, that's good if you know what the breaker size is, right? If you don't know what the tap conductor is. Actually, it's not good if you know what the. Yeah. It's good if you know what the size your tap conductor is going to be, and then you're working backwards to find the breaker for the feet. Well, the 10 feet tap. But we normally have the breaker size laid out and designed. In concert with the feeder size, the tap conductor is usually what you're looking for on 10 foot tap maximum. So the reverse math of that 
is uh, basically you divide by a thousand and multiply, but it's the reciprocal in this case is, is ten percent of the breaker. So if the breaker has to be a thousand uh, bigger, not can't exceed a thousand percent of the, 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 the uh, of the, the tap, the tap in reverse would be a tenth of that other number. So if you divide by a thousand instead of multiply it by a thousand, you'd get the same answer. Just multiply times point ten, you get the same same deal. Make sense? Or did I lose everybody? Probably lost everybody. All right. Can you give us an example? Okay. You know, like what they're telling you is that that if you have a motor circuit that's got a ten horsepower motor, right? Ten horsepower motor at uh, four at, at two oh eight volts, thirty point eight, I think, right? If I have a two uh, oh eight volt three phase motor. And it's a 10 horsepower. Is it 30.8? What page number is that, that uh, FLC stuff on? Did we talk about the yesterday? Yeah, the, the single phase and three phase tables? Yeah, we did. Uh, we can't pull one. <laughs> that was a trick question. Uh, 208, 30.8. Remember what page number it's on? You got tabs at the top. Look on the, the orange tabs on the top with the white lines on them are your tables for the uh, FLCs. Phase 350, 351. So for a three-phase motor, I'm on page 351, you'll also be at uh, 430. Uh, 238, 337, 337, 338, I think, spatial. Not at all. Oh, they got, they got two down. So you're looking at 30.8, right? So we're looking at 30.8 as an FLC of that motor. Now, as a conductor, from that start that we talked about yesterday, or the last point over current protection device, on the load side coming down into there, I've got one motor on one set of conductors. And so here, to size this wire, I did what number? Well, how would I size 125. 125%. Because I didn't tell you anything about the duty rating, so it's going to be considered continuous duty. Otherwise, unless otherwise told differently. So to size this wire from here to here, I'm looking at 125% of that number, right?